So today we're actually like for the first time doing uh, focusing on one theorem. So hopefully y'all like that. Uh, this has warm up. There is no warm up because I realized it's still 3D geometry. Um, so we're doing internally and externally tangent stuff, and then this thing called Descartes theorem. Uh, so first, why does it say coordinate? All right, this is 3D geometry. Uh, so we start off with internally tangent. And two, uh, two circles are internally tangent if the smaller one is inside the bigger one and then the smaller one touches the bigger one at one point. So this is an example of two circles that are internally tangent. Notice that they touch at one point. And then a really useful property is that the radius going from the center to that point also goes through the radius, uh, the center of the other circle. So like if I knew uh, the radius of one circle or both radii, then I know this distance between the centers, essentially. So that's gonna be useful. Externally tangent is kind of the opposite. Uh, they're both tangent, but it's outside the circle instead of inside. And they also touch at one point and the line connecting the, uh, the centers also goes through that point. So that's also useful. Okay, so we have internally, externally, make sure you know the difference. Uh, and in questions, they'll be, uh, they'll, they might just say, this is internally tangent to another thing, they won't actually give you a diagram. Okay, so uh, for 3D geometry, you'll see a lot of internally and externally tangent uh, spheres, and it's gonna be most commonly spheres. Uh, so small spheres inside of big spheres, or they're uh, just mutually uh, externally tangent, like this picture. So if this is the case, uh, then most of the time you can draw this 3D diagram. So three spheres, you can draw it as a 2D diagram. So what I did, uh, what I did here is I took the centers, and I put them on this plane, and then I just drew the circles in on that same plane. All right, and this perfectly corresponds to that. So there's no reason for you to have to like draw out a sphere. The only thing you have to watch out for is like, uh, for example, if you have all three of these balls on a table, uh, then they're not, this 2D diagram isn't gonna be perfectly flat. It's gonna be tilted up a bit. Okay, so how to solve these problems? First, we connect the centers. So in this, we have to connect these centers, form a triangle, and we already know all the side lengths of the triangle because uh, this side length is the sum of these two radii. This one is the sum of these two radii. That one is the sum of those two radii. And then you focus on that triangle specifically. You don't have to worry about the 3D aspect of it. And then you can solve whatever you're looking for using the Pythagorean theorem or proportions or whatever thing you have to use. In this case, uh, we're going to be using something called Descartes' theorem. I'll explain what that is. All right, uh, so first actually let's do our first problem. So this was on last time's handout, but we didn't get to it. We didn't get to two of the problems. This is one of them. Uh, so take a few minutes to read this and try it out. Uh, some of the terms here, three pairwise tangent. Pairwise tangent means that 
Um, if you choose any two of them, they're going to be a tangent. Okay, so let me draw it out and then I'll give y'all a little more time. Oh no. That's a perfect drawing. Okay, uh, for the sake of time, I'll just get started. So it says three pairwise tangent spheres of radius one rest on a horizontal plane. So to draw that out, I'm gonna do what we did in the slides. So I'll draw a 2D view of it. And this is looking directly from the top. So now I'll connect the centers. And just, uh, notice that this radius is one that's one, that's one, that's one, one, one. So the center, this center triangle is an equilateral triangle with side length two. All right, and then a sphere of uh, radius two rest on top of them. Now this is where after doing more problems, you'll realize how to do this. So for a side view, let's say those are my spheres. Then my radius two sphere is gonna rest like that. So it's not gonna be perfectly on top like that. So it's not gonna be this direct distance. Um, it's gonna be caved in a bit, all right? But uh, the parts that I can assume are vertically for, uh, upwards are this and that, all right? So we're trying to find this distance from the top to the plane. I should know this distance, the radius of the bigger one, so that's two. And I, uh, and I also know this radius, that's one. So all I have to find is this length between the two centers. Okay, now to find that height, it's difficult to do without using anything else. So I have to uh, make a triangle for myself now we take into account the fact that all of these spheres are the same. So all, uh, all three spheres are radius one. So they all lie on the same plane and they're all the same height, which means that it's completely symmetrical all three ways. All right, so if I put a sphere on top, um, it's gonna be the same no matter how I rotate it. Which means that this big sphere with radius two also lies on this center point. So it's going to be right above that point. All right, so this center, uh, the red point over here, lies directly, abo uh, directly above this red point over here. And I can draw that red point in on this red diagram. That's right there. And then what about this point? Well, this point corresponds to one of the centers of the, uh, of the spheres. So now I have a triangle from red to red, from red to green, and from green to red. So I have this triangle. I know that this length is three because that's one radius of uh, two. It, it's made up of a radius of two and a radius of one. So that's three. 
And then we're looking for this side. We don't know that. So if we know this bottom leg, then we can solve for what x is. And we can find uh, this bottom leg by finding this distance between the green and the red point. And what is that? Well, let me draw in. Sorry. This is just something you need to know about equilateral triangles. Um, for the center, given the side length of two, then this length is two over root three. So the distance between the center and one of the vertices is two over root three. I can show that by letting this leg be one, then this leg is one over root three. Because it's a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Uh, if you don't know what that is, just remember that the distance between the center and the vertex is the side length over root three. So in this case, that's two over root three. And finally, solving for x, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So that's four over three plus x squared equals nine x squared equals 23 over 3, and x equals root 69 over 3, after I rationalize it. OK, so that's our answer. Uh, so if you drop an altitude from the picture in the middle, red point to the bottom, um, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, so going back through the steps, what I did is uh, I used the fact that everything is symmetrical to say that the center of the big sphere is directly above the center of this triangle. And that should make sense intuitively. And then after that, uh, knowing this distance between the center of the small sphere to the center of the triangle, and knowing the distance between the center of the big sphere to the center of the small sphere, I can, uh, I can find that length. Oh. I forgot to add three to it. Um, so this x value was the distance between here and here. That's root 69 over three. So the actual height is two plus one plus root 69 over three. So that's three plus root 69 over three. I forgot to include the radii. Uh, this isn't a theorem. This is more like a method of solving the question. We'll talk about the actual theorem coming up right now. Okay, so this next problem uses this thing called Descartes' theorem. Uh, now, before we get into it, you have to have some properties fulfilled. You have to have all four circles uh, be pairwise tangent to each other. Uh, so I'll say one thing. Um, this is this isn't actually like really useful for 3D shapes. I just put it in the 3D section because I don't want to make a new section. Uh, so for, this is more like 2D, but you can also use it for 3D shapes, but you won't ever see it in AMC. Uh, so when four circles are pairwise tangent, that means that each pair of them, so every uh, circle is tangent to all the other ones. All right, and then before uh, we get into what that means, we define a curvature, which we call k, to, uh, of a circle to be plus or minus one over the radius. Uh, so just think of the curvature as a number. So uh, think of it as how round the circle is. Um, let's see. So the smaller the radius is, the bigger the curvature is going to be. The bigger the radius is, the smaller the curvature is going to be. And then ignore this plus or minus for now. I'll talk about it later. Uh, for example, for this circle on the right has a radius of two, then its curvature is one half. Okay, and then uh, that should make sense, hopefully. And a line, we can think of that as a circle with an infinite radius. So imagine you have a huge circle, but you take one small section of it, and that is your line. So we think of that as curvature zero because that's one over infinity. All right, so uh, just remember that a line has curvature zero. 
All right, so this kind of shows uh, what a diagram would be like where we could use the Descartes theorem. Um, there's two cases where this would work. So case one is where uh, this, third, this fourth circle is inside all the other circles. Notice that in all, uh, all these cases, three of these circles have to be like the orange circle. So uh, the thing that's changing is only this fourth circle, not the other three, okay? All right, so case one is where I have four circles and they're all externally tangent. Remember externally tangent means that they touch on their outsides. So this left one is uh, tangent to the red one, tangent to that one, tangent to that one. This is tangent to the red one, to that one. And this is tangent to the red one. And they're all externally tangent. So that's our case one. And in that case, uh, we let the curvature of the red circle be positive. Okay, so whatever the radius is, let's say the radius was two, then the curvature for that red circle, we call it one half. Okay, uh, and then for all of these orange circles, as I said on the right, we let their curvatures be positive. So in case one, all of these curvatures are positive. All right, in case two, we still have these orange circles and these orange circles are also uh, positive curvatures, but this green circle is huge and it's internally tangent to all the other three circles, right? Do you see how like uh, for each pair, so this circle and the green circle, they're internally tangent. So in this case, the green circle, we let it have negative curvature. Uh, so if the radius was like 50, then the curvature for the green circle is negative one over 50. All right, so uh, I'll give you all a couple more seconds to look at this, remember the cases. And finally, so this is where it actually gets useful. Uh, this is the actual formula. So letting those curvatures be K1, K2, K3, K4, then K1 plus K2 plus K3 plus K4 squared equals two times each of those squared individually. Uh, there was a question, why is it negative for the green circle? Uh, that's just how it is. It has to do with like why it's, um, it's internally tangent instead of externally tangent. You'll notice that like whenever it's externally tangent, it's positive. Whenever it's internally tangent, it's negative. And that's also just how they define it. There's like um, the actual like numerical value. It doesn't really matter. It's just only useful when we're doing this formula. Okay, so please write this down. If you, uh, on your handout because we'll be using it for most of these questions. And I'll have it uh, in my clipboard so I can paste it whenever. Okay, so that's our formula. Now we can do questions based on that. So this is a pretty simple one. I didn't actually have to use Descartes to solve this, but it comes so easy. It says uh, three circles of radius one are externally tangent to each other and internally tangent to, the, uh, to a larger circle. What is the radius of the large circle? So take uh, three minutes to do this and then we'll check afterwards. Um, all right, let me paste that because I know some of y'all didn't write it down. It's on that bottom. It's on the bottom right there.
also, if you want to check answers, uh, put them in the chat, I feel like, because the Q&A is open this time. And if you don't want people seeing your answer, then you can just put it in the chat. Okay, so I'll start doing this one uh, because you may not know where to get started. So I'll first draw these three circles of radius one. And they're externally tangent to each other. Uh, it's a bad drawing, they're only tangent at one point. And they're internally tangent to a larger circle. Wow. Okay. So, uh, what do I not know? I don't know the radius of the large circle, but I know the radius, the radii of all three circles inside. All right, they're all one. So the only thing you don't know is R and you can use uh, Descartes to solve for r. Remember that each of these k's just means one over the radius. So one over radius one, one over radius two, one over radius three. So I'll give you all uh, one more minute to do that. Okay, so I'll do it two ways. First way, I'll use Descartes. Uh, my curvatures are one over one, one over one, one over one, and one over r, uh, negative one over r, sorry. And uh, I got to this because I know that my three radii that are normal are all one. So the curvatures for all of those are one over one. And then for my last circle, the special one, it's internally tangent to all the other circles, which means that the curvature is negative. So it's negative right here. And then I put a one over R. Okay, so now I have all my variables and I can plug this in to this equation. So K1 plus K2 plus K3 plus K4 is that. Then I square that equals two times this expression. All right, and this is a quadratic. I only have one variable to solve for. So after that, I'll just solve for. All right, so it comes down to that. On the left side, I'll expand it. And then the right side distribute. This becomes 
Uh, let me multiply everything by r squared. So 9r squared minus 6r plus 1 equals 6r squared plus 2. So 3r squared minus 6r minus 1 equals 0. And we can use the, oh yeah, quadratic formula, I forgot. Uh, and this is r equals 6 plus or minus square root of b squared, so 36 minus 4ac. over 2a. So that's uh, 6 plus or minus square root of 48 over 6, which is 1 plus or minus 4 root 3 over 6, which is 1 plus or minus 2 root 3 over 3. Okay, so at this point, I have a plus and a minus, so I don't know which one to choose, right? Or actually, I do. Um, if I chose the negative one, I would have gotten 1 minus 2 root 3 over 3. And notice how that's less than 0. Uh, so this value is around, let's see, um, it's like 0 point, or negative 0 point something. Anyways. Uh, that wouldn't work, and this actually corresponds to, to the radius of the circle if I chose this circle instead. Uh, so by solving this, yeah, r can't be negative. So by solving this, I actually found uh, two radii. Uh, two radii. Uh, 1 minus 2 root 3 over 3 is negative, so I take the positive of that. That's 2 root 3 over 3 minus 1. And this is actually the radius of the inner circle. Uh, but I know that's not right because I want a bigger radius than one. So my answer is one plus two or three over three. And that's the big radius. Okay, notice that this was a pretty long solution. So I'll keep it up for a bit. Uh, but on the right, I'm going to solve it a different way. So I use this using Descartes, but earlier I solved number one using like, all right, did I? Yeah, I solved number one by connecting the vertices of the centers and then finding the distance between uh, this center and that center. So I can do the same thing here. Uh, so I have three circles. And then a center over here. If I connect the centers, I get an equilateral triangle again with side length two. And I'm looking for the radius of the big circle. So note, uh, note that before I said, if you connect, or first, if two circles are internally tangent and you take the center of the big one, you draw it to the point of tangency then it goes through the, uh, sorry, the center. It goes through the center of the other, uh, of the other spheres. So in this case, if I just find this darker length, add it to this radius, then I can find the total radius. And I know this darker length because I said that was two over root three. I take the side length of the equilateral triangle divided by root three. So that's two over root three. Then I add it to the radius of the smaller circle, and that's one. So two over root three plus one. And this, in fact, does equal my answer from before. Okay, but enough of that. Uh, let's try another one. So here's another one, it's very similar, but notice the wording there.
Okay, to get you started, here's the diagram. I have two circles with radius five and one circle with radius eight. And they're mutually externally tangent, which means that they're all tangent to each other. And this last circle, don't worry about m over n. Uh, just think of it as x. So we're trying to find what the radius is. So I'll draw that in. It's that little circle. Uh, now see if you can use this formula, oh, Descartes' theorem, to solve for what that x value is. Okay, don't worry, we have a lot more. So I'll just do this one. Uh, this is radius five, five, this is eight. And that one is radius X. So again, uh, we write out the curvatures for five. That's one fifth, for five that's one fifth. And for eight, that's one eighth. Because these are all the outer circles. So they have to be positive. Um, as for this little one that's inside, this one is 1 over x because it's inside and it's externally tangent to all the other circles. It's not internally tangent. So it's positive 1 over x. All right. Uh, now solving for x. I have to use this equation. So one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-eighth plus one over x squared equals two times one over 25 plus one over 25 plus one over 64 plus one over x squared. All right, and now we can solve for, uh, solve for x. So the left side is two-fifths plus one-eighth which is 21 over 40 plus one over X squared equals two times two over 25 plus one over 64 plus one over X squared. Uh, so it will be messy. Um, Descartes theorem will make you solve a messy equation, but it's better than the alternative. The alternative is to solve for this using the triangle here. And then you have to connect the center of that circle to each of these. And then you have to use a bunch of uh, equations just to find this one equation. All right, expanding. I'll just work this out in silence.
Oops. All right, you got the idea. Um, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do it. If you have time, go ahead and solve this uh, equation, okay? Also, the website should have the handout answer. So afterwards, if you want to look at it, um, go ahead and look at that. And if you don't want to, you can just search up the answer, uh, search, up, search up the question online, and you'll get the solution. But I guarantee you that the solution is the easiest. Uh, I want to go through these so that you see how to work out the problem, not how to do the algebra, OK? So let's take uh, two minutes to read this. Uh, and again, I'll work out the first few steps so you get an idea of how to solve the problem. But I won't actually do all the algebra because that'll take a long time. Okay, uh, the key thing to notice is that this is a problem that can be done using Descartes. Uh, we're only given one radius, but we can solve for the other uh, radius and that's the big one. So we have this is one and this circle goes through the center of the big circle, circle D, which means that uh, this point the point that's farthest outwards, that's the center of Z. All right, and that's also the diameter of a circle A, which has length two. So circle D has radius two. All right, circle A has radius one. And then what about B and C? Well, that's what we're solving for. But we also know that the radius, uh, the radii are congruent. So I'll call that x. I'll call that x. So that's x. This is x. And since I only have one unknown, I can plug it back in to my equation that's up here. Uh, 1 over oops, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1 plus one over x, plus one over x. Oh, I did forget one thing. Uh, since the curvature of circle D, or since it's internally tangent to all the, all the other circles, the curvature is negative one half. So you have to watch out for that. Um, I didn't catch it just now. But all these other ones, A, B, and C, the curvatures are positive because they're all the normal circles. The only one that's not normal is D. And since it's outside, uh, the curvature is negative. So just watch out for that. I'll rewrite the equation. So negative 1 half plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 over x squared equals 2 times negative 1 half squared plus 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 over x squared. All right. 
And that's one equation, one variable. You can solve for that. It might take a couple minutes. Okay, uh, so we're running pretty low on time. I want to get to the other questions. Uh, so look at this problem, read it, and then see if you can figure out a way to solve it. Uh, this uses the fact that the curvature of a line is zero. So remember that. paste it again if you want to see it. Okay. So I'll set up, I'll give you all um, the basic setup. I'll, let's actually solve this one out, okay? So first off, I have uh, three circles that are apparent to me, A, B, and the gray one. And we're looking for the radius of this gray circle. So I'll call that X, we're solving for that. And this is actually another case where we use Descartes. Um, because I treat this line as a circle with curvature zero. So imagine that you have this diagram without the line, and then you draw a huge circle that's, um, that contains the whole thing. So, or you can imagine, that, uh, imagine it as these three circles are on the Earth, and then that line represents the ground. And we all know that the Earth is a circle, right? So it's not flat. Uh, that means that it has a curvature, but the curvature is basically zero. So uh, we treat this line as a circle with curvature zero. And then now I have my other curvatures. This one is 1 fourth. This one is 1 over 1. This one is 1 over x. Now the question is, is this case one or case two? And then, uh, the answer is that it actually doesn't matter because the only thing that matters in case one and case two is what this value is. So plus zero is gonna be the same as minus zero. I can use the equation regardless. Uh, so plugging everything in, I have one fourth plus one over one plus one over x plus zero squared equals two times one fourth squared plus one over one squared plus one over x squared plus zero. I 
Okay, and then this left side becomes 5 over 4 plus 1 over x squared. The right side becomes 2 times 1 16th plus 1 plus 1 over x squared. All right, and I'll solve it out in silence. Almost done. And then I'll just, uh, let's see. And then factoring it out, I get this. So I have, again, two solutions. One is x equals 4 ninths. 1 is x equals 4. Uh, and again, it's very critical to make sure that you look back at the diagram. So my answers were 4 and 4 ninths. And the only one that makes sense is 4 ninths, right? If I had 4, it would be as big as this circle. Uh, but 4 ninths is right because it's less than 1. So that's my answer. OK. Uh, so the only the important thing to remember is that even in diagrams like this, you can use Descartes because we treat this line as k equals zero. All right, for the next few, um, I'm going to do this one, and then if I have time, the last one. Let's take uh, one minute or two minutes to read this, and then see if you can figure out how to do it. Uh, to save you some time, this radius is 2, that's 1, and we're looking for the radius of this circle. That's all the problem is asking for. Okay. Uh, now, it's very helpful that they gave us the diagram because it's also helpful that we've been doing Descartes because um, I can flip this image over, then draw in the other halves of these circles. And then now you'll notice that this is just Descartes, right? I have a radius of 2, which is this circle, radius of 1, which is this circle. And then for the big circle, that one, I know that the diameter is that line. And the length of that line is 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, which is 6. So the radius is 3 for that. So I have three circles, uh, 2, 1, r, that are inside. And they all have positive curvature, so 1 half, 1 over 1, 1 over r. 
And then my outer circle has radius three. And since it's outer, it has a, neg a negative curvature of negative one third. And I can solve the problem uh, using that. Okay, uh, let, let's go through. So number seven was actually like the same, uh, the same way to do it. It uses the same method. Let's go to the last problem, number eight. So this is our first 3D problem that's not Descartes and that's not the first problem. Um, all right, let's take two minutes to read it. And the important thing is to figure out how to do it and not to get the answer. So try to uh, come up with a way to find the answer. Uh, just as a warning, don't use Descartes here. Descartes won't work. Okay, you know what? I'll leave this for the homework uh, so, <laughs> so I can get through this last part. Um, so the important things to keep, in, keep aware of are make sure that they are in fact four circles and they're pairwise tangent. So it doesn't work if I have like that, 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 that doesn't work. I have to have all of them be tangent. In this case, this circle and that circle aren't tangent, so I can't use Descartes. Um, make sure that you end up with two answers because that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, when, when you have two answers, choose the one that makes sense for the problem. And then uh, like number six, you had to manipulate the question to find out uh, to actually find the four circles that you're looking for. All right. And uh, just for fun, this is the formula for Descartes for uh, 3D spheres or an n-dimensional sphere. So for three-dimensional spheres, uh, what we're typically, typically going to use, so 3D spheres, that means n is three. This is five. That's five. That's three. Um, you can notice that if I plug in two for n, this is what Descartes is. For two-dimensional spheres, which is circles, uh, our formula is this. So if you're like really, really good at memorizing and you just memorize this formula, then you can uh, use it for 2D, uh, 2D Descartes, for 3D Descartes, anything. Uh, but for sure, you won't use uh, n equals 3 for like AMC and most likely not for a, uh, Amy. OK, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for coming. And we'll have the homework posted. Uh, just a reminder that almost all of these slides are up on the website. And uh, we have the answers and all that on the website as well. So uh, check that for sure. We also have the recordings on there. Um, anyways, thank you. Isabella, is there anything else? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, today was a really great class. And just as a reminder, next one's probably going to be the last one. So uh, thanks again for coming and see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.